Hey guys, this is Erica, part one of organic gardening and using essential oils in the garden. I'm excited to talk about this topic because this is a new topic for me. I mean, pretty new. The last three years is when I've been really trying to have an organic garden. And so I've loved it and it's a journey and I'm still learning, but I actually learned a lot um, just getting ready to talk to you about it. I learned a lot more. So I'm excited to implement it and try it. Um, I grew up in a family that used chemicals and still, to be honest, still does. Um, so I have gardened, but all only using chemicals. So this is like a whole new thing for me and I'm really liking it. So um, basically you guys know we've been on a journey, um, if you heard me speak at all, we've been on a journey of getting rid of anything toxic in our lives, um, emotions, chemicals. Um, anything that's not good for us, um, we're on a journey of healing my body from breast cancer and trying to prevent um, things in my own, you know, my kids and my husband's um, health. So um, this is just kind of going parallel with what our journey is, which is going, uh, you know, getting ditching the chemicals in the garden. So um, the reason we ditch chemicals is because um, there's three main th things that are you that typical gardeners use, and people that are growing plants they use herbicides, pesticides, and fertilizers. So herbicides they don't just kill weeds; they are toxic to both humans and animals. Um, the dogs that play in herbicide-treated yards have a 300% increase of cancer, and um, a manufacturer-supported review deemed the herbicides as safe, um, but certain studies have found that it affects uh, human embryonic, placental, and umbilical cells in vitro. So uh, herbicides are just not good. Uh, pesticides, they don't just kill garden pests either. So do you know that only 1% of the um, insects that come around your garden and your yards are actually harmful to your garden and yard? So the other 99% are beneficial. Um, pesticides, they disrupt the natural ecosystem by, they exterminate both the pollinators uh, and beneficial insects along with the destructive ones. So we need the pollinators to pollinate, that's how it's produced, um, the beneficial, we need the worms because they are bringing oxygen into the, um, they're creating, you know, holes and oxygen in the ground and their waste is beneficial and so it's very important to have um, other insects in your garden. So pesticides, they don't discriminate, they kill them all. So we wanna stay away from pesticides if you're organic gardening. Um, synthetic chemical-based harm uh, fertilizers are harmful. And so those are going to be um, inorganic fertilizers that are like, they're often made from industrial waste and they can contain dangerous substances such as nitrates, lead, arsenic, cadmium, and radioactive components. And so basically the fertilizers and herbicides can do the same well as they contaminate the plants, the soil and the groundwater um, supply. And the runoff contaminates lakes and rivers and ponds. And when the runoff gets in the ponds, that also upsets the natural ecosystem, which is going to create an overgrowth of algae and it's going to suffocate uh, aquatic plants and animals. And so Overall, we don't want them in our earth and we don't want them in ourselves because if you've been in natural health at any amount of time, you understand for the human body to flourish and be healthy, um, we have to support our body. And so we support ourselves with good nutrients and um, good things that help our body be strong and have a natural immune system. Well, that's the same thing we're going to do with organic gardening. We are we are going, aiming to produce a better and more quality plant. So hopefully you're buying good seeds, um, like organic seeds are awesome, um, but you're gonna be planting seeds that are quality. You're gonna be planting them in quality dirt, have good sunlight, good water. So that's what we're gonna talk about in part one. I wanna tell you real quick that um, a little bit about, and then when spoke oh, part two, sorry, part two is gonna be more about essential oils, but this is where I got the information. It's called Essentially Grown. It's a book that I got from growinghealthyhomes.com. They have amazing resources. And this is one that was like $5.95. So super cheap. Has basically 
the meat of what you want to know. It's not a lot of fluff, not a lot of talk. It's like, here, you want to do organic gardening? You want to use essential oil? Boom, here you go. I like that. I don't want to have to go searching. So this is a great book. Um, so, okay, so I just talked about um, the um, organic gardening. So let's talk about sunlight. You want to get about 6 to 10 hours of sun on your garden a day. So you will need it to be in mostly full sunlight. Um, there's some herbs I noticed that are partial, so it's great. The herbs you can put in a, in a um, typical herbs, not all, but most herbs you, it looks like it appears that you can put in some partial shade. Um, some, uh, some, um, it's important to have good soil. So good soil is the root of, um, of, of, of you organic growing and growing a strong plant that produces good fruit and produces a lot of fruit. So some of the things for the soil for organic gardening that's very important is something called humus. <clears throat> I don't know if that's how you sound it or it's hummus, but it's H-U-M-U-S. And that retains moisture and allows for sufficient drainage because we want to be able to not, uh, we need drainage because we don't want to grow any kind of fungus. Um, that's going to create a weaker plant. And um, we need beneficial organisms. So like organic soil, that actually supports living organisms. If you go get some soil that's full of fertilizers and pesticides, like the main ones that you see when you go, those are all not going to create an environment that are going to be good for earthworms and for bumblebees and for other animals, other insects that are going to be good for your plant. So you want to get an organic soil that's going to support your living organisms. Um, which there's millions, I'm just naming a few. Um, get a, a soil and a soil kit, and that can help you tell you what your pH of your soil is, as well as tell you the three main nutrients um, that are in your soil. You need to, um, the, the, the nitrogen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, or also called potash, are the most vital um, nutrients, and the secondaries are cal calcium, magnesium, and sulfur, or secondary nutrients that are important. So a soil kit will help give you a gauge on what you have going now. And then from that gauge, you can figure out what you need to add. And there's organic options to add any of those. So if it's you need more nitrogen, you need more magnesium, you can or add organic options for that. Um, compost is a great way to add nutrients to your soil. So we compost at our house. If you don't, you can buy it. Um, compost is where we put all our vegetables and fruit, um, remains, um, eggs, um, from our table because all those nutrients are going to, I don't want to throw them away. So I'm going to put them in my um, compost and then feed my plants with it later. It creates like a thick, dark um, uh, compost. Yeah. So um, that's a whole other talk, but um, that's great. And it's good to put a two to four inches on the top of your garden. So I made a mistake today of just mixing or this week of mixing my compost in with my existing garden dirt and so I now know that I should have separated out and placed it on top of each plant planted and then put on top of each plant but I'll do that next year so or, or fall when I start doing falls or anything else that I do um, but two to four inches of that on top is really good because then when it waters it waters it down and it continues to put nutrients into the earth um, underneath it um, fertilizer there's organic a lot of organic options and that's going to add um, nutrients that aren't available in your soil. And that's what I said to add, like if you're adding new, uh, nitrogen or magnesium to your garden, um, or I mean nitrogen or phosphorus um, to your garden. So, okay, the second part of the third is you have water, soil. Third is watering. So, speaking from the stakes, Three, a, a, a few good days of deep watering is better than just a shallow watering. So I shallow watered with the sprinkler last year. This year I am deep root watering, which is basically applying water to the base of the plants and not as much the leaves. And I've created like a little thing around the plant, like a little ditch where I can water. So it's going to deep water. It's going to create deeper roots. Deeper roots are going to create a better plant. So... Rainwater is good for it. If you wonder, if you ever wondered why it can rain like a day and all of a sudden everything looks greener than when I'm watering, it's because the rainwater has minerals and nutrients in the water. So um, we do keep our rainwater. Um, that is a very crunchy option, but I do like to 
I like my uh, get. I don't like to waste water, so if I'm gonna. It rains a lot in Texas. We have our rain water, our rain barrels stay mostly full um, because we get water randomly. So, um, and then um, so protecting your plants from pests um, is is really good. So. Um, I'll kind of end with that and we'll talk more about it, but basically it's really good to encourage beneficial insects and pest predators like frogs, lizards, birds, bats, spiders, and ladybugs. We have our bat boxes we'll put up um, hopefully this weekend um, to attract uh, mating bats and that helps with getting down the mosquitoes and other bugs in your yard. Um, but you remove the bigger um, bugs off the plant like caterpillars or you see um, slugs or tomato worms go ahead and um, hornworms to get those off your plants um, and then consider companion planting is a big thing with organic gardening um, I know and that's something I'm still learning about but basically two plants there's a lot of plants that complement each other and help each other create stronger plants so like for instance basil and tomatoes work really good together um, basil helps the tomatoes taste better. They get rid of each other's pests that they like. So companion gardening is a thing that I'm still learning about and have not completely um, tried because it seems overwhelming. But I'm, I'm getting there. So, you know, I'm not there yet, but I'm going to. And then can make, continue to clean it, keep a clean garden, keep your stuff free of waste and sitting water and stuff away from your garden um, to help with get, keeping the area clean. So this is organic gardening. 101 uh, part one very basic like I'm not an expert um, but this is part one part two we're going to talk about essential oils and I am that's the that's the fun part so we're going to talk about essential oils next